Graspa Metal Meeting, the most beloved festival in all of Belgium, and a fan favorite all across the world. Started in 1996 with an already killer lineup, with the first headliner ever being Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden? Excellent! Graspop very quickly established itself as one of metal's top destinations for a holiday full of headbanging mayhem and drunken campground chaos. Around 150,000 metalheads from all across the globe traveled to Dessel, Belgium for four days of mayhem from metal's biggest bands. Graspop consistently has great lineups, with some of the best headliners of any of the major festivals. This year including the likes of Guns N' Roses, Slipknot, Molly Crew's backing tracks, Gojira, Ghost, Pantera, and about 103 more bands from all across the rock and metal genre. Grass Pop does tend to have more of a focus on the more mainstream side of things, but there's plenty of extreme underground bands playing as well. You can expect solid legendary headliners consisting of bands you grew up with, Iron Maiden being the band that's headlined the most times, but Grass Pop also serves to build up the small bands of today into becoming future headliners. I first attended Grass Pop in 2008, one of my very first festivals ever. The headliners that year were Judas Priest, Kiss, and Iron Maiden. My first time seeing all of those bands, which was amazing. But if you take out your magnifying glass and you peep down real low on the lineup, you'll find a really small band no one's ever heard of called Sabaton. A band that have since exploded in popularity and now rank among the modern giants. A lot of that is thanks to Grasspot putting them in front of their massive audience over the years. That everything was thanks to one guy who pushed us into to the, the stores to help us promote it. And eventually he also introduced us to some guy who who happened to run uh, some little legendary festival in Belgium, and he was like, Sabaton, ah, I kind of like this band. You, you guys sound good. I can give you a slot to see how it goes at the festival, kind of. And, and for me, at that time, I was thinking, this should be maybe the, the new Iron Maiden. And it's pretty awesome to personally see a band go from opening the main stage at 10 a.m. in the rain to headlining the same festival. Ah, there we are again. Then we came back in 2010. Yes, it's getting better. Over here. Aha! Getting bigger. Yes. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. 17. 17. 19, 19. There we go. Yay! Yeah. And then we are there. Yay! Speaking of that, let's talk about the size since this is where I think Grass Pop really excels. It is a big festival with a lot of people, but it doesn't really feel that large of a space, actually. Grass Pop seems to have found a great size in between being a major festival while not overflowing into a wall-to-wall -wall endurance test. In my video about Hellfest, I said how that is so large it feels like a city of metal. Grass Pop still feels like a solid summer festival weekend where fans gather to camp and party while seeing some great bands in the middle of nowhere. The stages really aren't that far away from each other, and you can find good spaces to hang out in the middle of all the action. The two main stages are where most of the excitement is, but if you need to get out of the sun, there's also the Marquee, a very massive covered stage with more of the extreme bands on the bill, my type of style. Then there's the Metal Dome and the Jupiter stage that I probably pronounced wrong, for all of you headbangers too cool for the main stages. And if you go stumbling around drunk and find yourself waking up in a bumper car, don't worry, you're still at Grass Spot because it even has its own little fair with carnival rides and games. So if you need a break from moshing, and drinking, why not play a game of duck race or just take a nap in the Ferris wheel? I think this area is awesome. They're pretty standard carnival attractions you'd find anywhere, but it's a nice touch in making Grass Pop feel like a fun weekend fair full of metal bands and alcohol. You got your pop-up bars, food stands all over the place, and of course, your metal vendors. Camping at Grass Pop is pretty much the standard as any festival. A benefit, though, is it's quite close to the rest of the festival, and you won't find yourself walking for hours just to get back to your car, either. I'd say the campground is a healthy size, and and if you set up camp on the outskirts, it can take maybe an hour to get to the main stages. But hey, compared to some other festivals, it's really not that bad. As you probably know by now, if you choose to camp, you'll be able to experience late night partying, unending day drinking, morning beers, random yells of Slayer all throughout the night, and of course bonding with fellow metal savages and making tons of friends. But if you need a bit more than a tent, Grasspop has got quite a few interesting options for you. 
Nearby, you'll find these teepees and huts you can get in advance in a less crazy part of the campground. But if you're more of a relaxing vacation type, or maybe with your family, or just really want to stay somewhere quiet, some 25 kilometers away, I don't know how far that is because I'm a dumb American, are two separate lovely nature areas where you'll find these nice cottages right near the lake with all the amenities you'll need. And it's even got a water park nearby. Damn, that's pretty cool actually. You will have to use the local train or cab to go to the festival and back though, so keep that in mind if you choose this option. If you do camp on the festival grounds and need some supplies or would just like to do some exploring, Grass Pop offers free shuttles into town. Walk around and check out the sights, visit a nice restaurant, laugh at the locals staring at all the metalheads. If you're going to a festival, I think it's good to explore the area and support the locals. After all, you are invading their town. To get to Grass Pop, the nearest major airports are Eindhoven Airport, Brussel Airport, and Brussel South Airport. And lucky enough, there are shuttles right at the airport that will take you directly to the festival. That is nice. If you're somewhere else in Belgium, don't worry, you're still probably not far from a shuttle to Graspop, as Graspop has ones picking up all over the country. And if you're coming by train, you'll be heading to the Mole train station, then board the bus. I apologize right now to all the Belgian people watching for how badly I'm mispronouncing all these words. Don't blame me. Blame America. Grasspot Metal Meeting has been held in high regard by its loyal fan base for a long time, and it is easy to see why. It consistently delivers an excellent lineup that's a great mix of genres for fans all across the board. If you want massive headliners, well, you got it. If you want underground bands playing to giant crowds, you got that too. It's a great choice for festival veterans who want that classic bunch of stages out in a field with bands playing type of festival that's not too flashy. And for those wanting to go to a festival for the very first time, I think Grasspop is a very great choice. You'll get to experience all the things that make festivals so much fun and can pretty much count on a great lineup every year. And it's a festival that won't have you walking the entire length of the Great Wall of China just to get to each stage. Although the queue to get out after the headliner can feel like you're herding cattle. It's a great place to get the full festival experience without being too overwhelmed for your first time. Grasspot Metal Meeting continues to earn its long-held place among the metal festival greats, and it's one that you will definitely want to check off your list. I know, because I've unfortunately only been that one time many, many years ago. But after looking at this year's lineup, it might just be time for my return. But what do you think of Grasspot Metal Meeting? Have you been before? Is it your favorite festival? Is it one that you're looking to go to? Let me know in the comments below, and also let me know what other festivals you'd like me to cover, and I will see you in the next video.